apologies for joining in late. Uh, I am having some internet challenges here in Abuja. Uh, <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And um, like Wisdom has said, um, I have been given an opportunity to tell you people about Git, okay, and GitHub. So I'm going to try to share my slide so we can take it up from there. Uh, just give me one minute so I can start sharing my, my slide. Um, I don't know, like, I, I, I want to believe that um, the organizers, they've sent you, there is a GitHub repo that we created for this event. Okay, and um, all the speakers are creating their content, any content that you want to use, uh, uh, it's been shared on GitHub. So I want to assume that by now you must have taken a look at my um, my 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 content, the content I'm going to be sharing with you today. Uh, in 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 a few minutes, I'll be there, and uh, yeah. So can you see my slide now? Mm, um yes hello yes i can any other person yeah can. so you can see uh, i am open. okay every other person can see it. awesome awesome so if you can see my slide this is uh the topic for my presentation today um because of work and some other activities i didn't have uh, have the time to create my presentation slide but what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to look at this document that and just try to explain and also do some practicals on the, uh, uh, so that we can practice and you see how to use Git, okay? The whole idea is to introduce Git to you. So we're going to walk through this slide and I'll try to explain what each of the section is saying. Then I'm also going to create a project uh, on GitHub and we can use that uh, project to practice how to work with Git. Yeah, so officially, let's start. And um, my topic today is on Git essential training, the basics. So uh, Git is very, very important. You know, that's why the organizers have picked this topic and asked us to share the knowledge about Git with you. It's very, very important. Now, if you are a content writer or a technical content writer or a developer. And if you don't have a Git profile, okay, you've not started. You've not started. Git is very, very important. Tell me a good developer that you know out there. If you tell me this guy is a good developer, the next thing I want to look at is his, his or her GitHub repo. I want to see the activities. So what happens in GitHub is that uh, uh, they use GitHub to know how active a developer or a technical content writer in this contest. I believe I'm talking to uh, future technical content writers. Okay, so it is like when you want to write these days, when you want to write um, technical documentations, you use Git to do that. For example, uh, I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself, okay, uh, when I started. I was tensioned up because I joined in late. Uh, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Gino Sahan, and um, I work as a developer advocate with a global blockchain company called IUV Labs. You know, and as a developer advocate, I am focused on some very important areas. I contribute to content, so we have a developer portal. So I write content, uh, tutorials, how to use our platform and our blockchain. So I write those contents. I organize events for my organization. Uh, I, I attend events to speak at events. And um, I also bridge the gap between our developers or our partners, people who are using our applications or our protocols and uh, the services that we've been able to develop in our company. They're called our partners. So I work uh, in the developer experience to bridge the gap between our partners and our, our products. You know, so I write how you can use, how you can build on our, our, our blockchain, I write tutorials, I speak at events and, and all that. So that's about me. 
so GitHub is very, very important. So you should, you should pay attention. And after this uh, uh, presentation, I want you to go to this uh, demo, like this uh, HackND. It's on GitHub, okay? It's on... Uh, uh, this content is on GitHub on the on the technical uh, content writing repo. Uh, the organizers created the GitHub repo, and every speaker is um, asked to put their content there. So you can have access to this content, and on your own time, um, look at it and research about it. Okay. So, uh, like I've said, GitHub is very very important. Every developer or every technical content writer needs to have a GitHub profile. And so today I'm going to tell you about Git. Now there's a difference between Git and GitHub. Okay, there's a difference between Git and GitHub. GitHub it's a, it's a platform where people can uh, uh, put up their code. For example, if uh, let's bring it down to the context of technical writing. Uh, if you're working for a company and and um, uh, you will have developer portal where you're writing content on how developers can use your product or services. Uh, these days we use Git. Okay, so what we use GitHub, GitHub and Git. So GitHub is the platform that is online. It's it's like a, a it's like um it's like a storage for programming codes. So if you are writing codes, you can put your codes on GitHub. And if you, now, these days, remember that remote work is very, very important. All of us are doing remote work right now. You are in Nigeria and you are working with a company in Germany or in America or in any part of the world. And you have teammates in, for example, in America, in Spain, in Brazil and all that. And you people want to work on a project. So GitHub is a place where you put uh, the project and every team member that is part of that project can have a copy of that project. They, they, what, so what they do is that they'll go on GitHub, clone, we call it clone, but you done, what clone means is that you download the project down to your local computer and you can work on that project. You can contribute your own part of the code. And after you are done, you push it back to, uh, to the GitHub repository and other members can see what you have done. So someone in Germany can write their code, push it to GitHub. You that's in Nigeria, you can see that code, you can download that code, add more features to it, push it back. So GitHub is that repository, that database or that storage facility that's online that you can use to manage projects, you know. So that's GitHub. Then we have Git. I'm going to be focusing on Git today. Because after you have cloned the project from GitHub down into your computer, okay, you are going to edit that project and you will be using Git to now uh, manipulate that project. And after you are done with it, you can use Git to push that project to the, to the repository, to the repository that's online so that everybody can see. So Git, Git is very, very important. And so let's take a look at what I've written about Git. I took a course on... Uh, LinkedIn about Git. So that was where, I, these are my notes. I was taking down notes as I was taking the course and these are all the notes that I took down. So I'm going to explain these things down to you. So let's start with what is Git. Okay. So Git is a software that allows you to do the following. Okay. So with Git, you can keep track of changes you make to your file and directory. Okay. So what that means is that Remember I told you we have GitHub and we have Git. GitHub is the platform or the website or the, 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 the platform where your codes are hosted, your codes are saved there. Okay. So, but if you want to work on your code on your computer, you have to download the project that is on GitHub down. After you've downloaded it down to your local computer, you now start maybe adding more features, writing programs. If it's a technical content, you now add more technical content. And once you're done with that, you push it back. So GitHub, uh, Git enables you to track changes, changes on your project. So any change you, you, you make on your project, 
Git can enable you to track it. For example, if you make a change today, Git will be able to tell you, hey, Gino made a change on this project yesterday. And, and uh, if, you, if, I make, if, I, if you make another change, every day you make changes, these things are recorded on Git. Why that is important is because so that in case, for example, you want to go, maybe you made a change yesterday, and uh, today you realize that, oh, that change, that thing that I added to that project yesterday wasn't the right, right uh, content, okay? You can go back, you can go back to that uh, 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 yesterday's uh, activity and continue work from there. But let me, let me try to, if I move ahead, you'll be able to uh, understand better. So, but just know that at this point, Git helps you to track any change you make to your, to your project, okay, or to your directory. Git allows you to keep track of versions of your document. For example, in the context of technical writing, you write a content today, okay, and tomorrow you modify that content. Next tomorrow, you add some more content. The other day, you add some more content. Git will enable you to be able to track the different versions. So you can reverse and say, I want to go back to Thursday. I want to go back to Thursday. Uh, or to, for example, today is um, Saturday. You can say you want to go back to uh, how the project was looking on Monday. So it enables you to track the versions of your document. It, al it allows you to move back and forth between the versions of your document. So the primary purpose of all version control system is to manage source code. Okay, so you know as a developer, we write codes and we write this source code. So Git enables you to manage uh, your source code. Okay, uh, this enables developers to manage different versions of their code base as they continue to add feature. So for example, now if you, if you join a company, for example, uh, maybe you join Google today and you're a technical content writer with Google, okay? You are going to uh, have a GitHub uh, project or repository or directory containing all the technical contents that you'll be writing. So someone from Nigeria can write to that content and push it out there. The other person from Spain can see what the person that's from Nigeria has added, you can bring, we call it clone. You clone it down and you can add your own feature to it and save it. So it enables a group of people to work on one project. So um, we, 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 we have other examples of version control and versions of uh, your project or your source code. So for example, Oh, we have other examples of uh, uh, version controls. We have uh, file naming. For example, if you have used Microsoft Word before, if you have, I want to believe a lot of you have used Microsoft Word. If you use Microsoft Word, you know that when you are typing on Microsoft Word, if you do Control Z, if you do Control Z, it can take you back to previous version. In Microsoft Word, you can decide to check what I did last week. You can de decide to reverse your document to what, what you did last week. Okay. Um, we, uh, so on your Microsoft Word, when you do, when, for example, you write a document, you write technical content on how to do something on your company's, uh, uh, about your company's products, okay, and you save it in Microsoft Word. Tomorrow you come, you add more to it. Next tomorrow you come, you add more to it. So if you do control Z, a lot of us do control Z. If you do control Z, it takes you back to previous version. So that's like version control. But Git was designed to do version controlling for, for source code and um, technical content okay, on, on, on a large scale. So let us look at some history of um, Git. So before Git came into existence, we've had five previous version control systems, okay? Uh, the first one was source code control system. This was developed in 1972 by AT&T, okay? This, this was doing something like Git, but I'm going to tell you how Git is different from all these previous version controls that we had before. Um, uh, we have revision control system. This was developed in 1982, and it was open source. We have concurrent version systems. We have Apache subversion. We have BitKeeper. These are all previous version control before Git came in. 
But Git is what Git came out and all these other ones are like we don't even know about these other ones again because Git is Git is prof, uh, providing some things that these other version control systems were not providing. So Git launched in April 20, 2005. It was created by Linus Torvald. I want to believe that a lot of us know Linus Torvald. He was the founder of the Linus operating system. Okay, so he uh, it was created by this guy. So Git was a replacement for BitKeeper. Like all the, there was the the last previous version control system that was out there. Uh, uh, sorry, at this point, I want to make sure uh, I'm still online and everybody's hearing me. Wisdom, uh, is everybody still hearing me? Yeah, sure, sure. Can you guys respond in the chat? So, is that way? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, thank you. So, it means, it means we are on point. So, and um, Git was first used to manage Linus kernel source code. If you know about the Linus operating system, Linus operating system is an open source operating system that's founded by Linus Toval. And um, uh, so Git was first used to manage the Linus kernel source code. Git is a distributed version control system. It is open source and it's free. A lot of us these days, like open source is, is something that every developer or content technical content writer should be part of. Um, it's out of the context of this, my uh presentation but open source is um it's a system that allows you to create a project and anybody from around the world can use that project you know for example some people who are very smart and all that they create maybe a, a code that is doing something they love that code they make it private okay but if you make it open if you make it open source it means everybody can use it Anybody can use that your code. Uh, one minute, please. Okay. Yeah, let's continue. I'm just having some distractions on my WhatsApp, but um, it's okay. Let's continue. So I was telling you about open source. Open source is something that you can search online. What's open source? It's open source is it's um, it is it is it's a system that allows you to use once a project or a code is open source anybody can use it and anybody can contribute to that code okay you don't have to pay to use open source uh projects and a lot of the applications that we as developers or technical content writers use these days are open source a lot of them are open source you know so github was github was launched in 2000 it was it, it was to host git repositories github was purchased by microsoft in 2018. So remember, I was telling you about GitHub. Please, if you are going to learn something today, learn that there's a difference between Git and GitHub. Okay. GitHub is the platform, it's online, it's like a hosting platform for source code. Anybody can create a project, your uh, a code, and you put it on GitHub. When you put it there, every other person can see. You can decide to make your project on GitHub private or public. If it's private, it's only you that can see it. If it's public, every other person can see it. But Git now is local. You download Git to your local system and you use Git to work on your project, you know, and you use Git to send your, to GitHub, push, put it to GitHub. Okay, so there are two different uh, platforms, okay? I believe you have more understanding as we go deeper. Uh, so distributed version, different users each maintain their own repositories instead of working from a central repository. So instead of, for example, you know, these days we have what we call remote jobs. Before now, you have to go to the office every day to work, okay? So instead of everybody going to the office and you are working on a project, you can be in your house and you can still work on that project using Git, okay? And when you are done, you use Git to push your project to GitHub and your colleagues who maybe some of them are staying in different states or, or in different countries, they can see that code that you've updated. They can contribute to it. So changes are stored as um, change set, okay? 
speed tracks changes and not versions like CVS and SE and so on. As you are working on your project, every change you make, every new feature you add, Git is recording them. It's recording them. The reason is that so that you can say, hey, okay, what I did today was wrong. I want to go back to what I did last week. I want to go back to what I did yesterday. You know, So Git enables you to manage those processes. It saves every... Once you, once you commit, once you do good Git commit, it is safe. And you can go back to that previous version and, 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 and use that previous version. That's if you've made a mistake in, 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 in your current version. So we are, I'm going to explain more and you have more understanding, okay? Um, uh, so there's no single master repository, just many working copies and each with their own combination of chain set. So if you have five members in a team and you have, they're working on a student management system, for example, or they are, for, I, I'm trying to bring this into the context of technical writing, okay? Because we, we now use Git and GitHub for even technical writing but it's mainly for, for codes, okay? So if you, as a technical content writer, maybe you are the lead, uh, you are the lead te technical content writer, you create a project and say, we want to write content for, on how people can use this, our product. And you, that's the lead of the, uh, of the group, you create that project, you put it there on GitHub, then your team members can be in South Africa, in Germany, in Japan, and all that, and each of them, we have a copy of that project and they can work on it locally, do whatever they want to do locally to it. And when they are ready to allow everybody to see it, they'll push it. So we have a lot of commands. I, I, we are going to look at those commands, okay? Um, so developers can work independently and submit change set for inclusion or rejection. Okay, so you're yeah, a developer in Germany, yeah, your company is working, your team is working on this project. You pull the project down, you work on it, and you make changes to it, and you send it back to your team leader. Your team leader will now look at the changes you've had. So uh, I already have Git installed on my computer, so I will not go through the process of installing it. So, but if you want to install Git, this is what you need to do. You can use brew install Git to install Git. Okay, and this use which git command to find out which git you are using, and you can use git version, git dash dash version. Uh, for example, I could do that here. I was already typing this. I didn't know that you were wearing following. So you can do git dash dash version to, to show you the version of git that you are using. Or well, I already have it installed, so no need going through the installation process. So I, I was in the process, process of creating a project so that we can use that project to practice how to use Git. Okay, so let me I'll create the project and um, yeah, one minute. Uh, Sincere apologies. Um, yeah, so, so let's install NPM, NPM install. So this is going to install um, all the dependencies that I'll be using this project. So what I'm trying to do it's to create a simple project so that as we are learning about Git, the different commands, we can be practicing it, okay, using the different commands as we to install all my dependencies that I'm going to use for this project. And this, this takes some time, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just keep explaining and we'll come back to this. Once it's properly installed, then we can start using it, okay? So uh, after you've installed Git, you can do some configurations, you need to do some configurations. For example, um, using git config dash dash global dot username, you can set your username, okay? As uh, for example, you wanna start using git, you have to do these conf configurations. You have to set your username, you have to set your email, 
Okay, use git config that needs to list all of your configurations. Uh, then you can use git config username user.name to review your username. So let, let me try to practice, show some of these commands so that you can see how they work. Oh, no, no. So my command prompt is busy setting up uh, this. And, or maybe I can fire up another command prompt so that we, we don't just have to wait till, till the installation before we move on. Um, Yeah, so why this is setting up? So let's let me use oh my god. So Is git. You can just simply do git config user the name. If you see this, it will show that uh, it's Gino or Sahon that's using this git because I've already configured it. Then I can also do git config user.email to find out the email address of the person using the git. So we have what we call git autocomplete. What git autocomplete does is that as you are typing a command, as you are typing a command, it to maybe you type the first uh, letter of uh, maybe a file path, it automatically just bring out the rest of uh, the name. Git autocomplete, it enables you to work with commands like easily. You can just start typing the command and to bring the full command that you want that you want to type. So enable GitHub autocomplete is how to enable Git. So this, this, this content is available for you, okay? The organizers, they are going to share it for you, uh, to you, and you can uh, uh, take your own time to look at it in depth. So, uh, so this is how you initialize a Git repository, okay? Uh, let me see if... Um, Uh, we said that command prompt that um, that I was using. Mm, how do I get out that command prompt? Oh, God. I don't know why it's taking so much time, but we should have gone past this place. So what, what I'll do, I'll just create a new project and... New project, then CD into new project. CD new project. This is this is crazy. Mm. This is a new project. So how you initialize a new project, let, let's just be running the, the, the following command. So what you need to do is to do git I need, which is git um, initializing a new project. Then um, okay. Uh, this is an empty project. That's why I wanted the, my harder project to, to be up so that we can open it on uh, Visual Studio Code and see the different projects and, and make modifications. But I don't know what's happening here. It's taking so much time. Maybe it's my internet. Uh, okay, so what I'll do, I have projects already, Git projects that I have. So I'm going to launch one of them and we'll use that to practice, okay? Um, Uh, let me look for a project that we can use. Uh, Risky dev course. Okay, so let me say token. Okay. 
doing I'm inside the project. Yeah, I'm inside the project now. So let's open this project on uh, VS Code. Yeah, so this is a sample project. Just forget about what, what the project is about. It's, it's a blockchain project, but we have a project. So let's see how we can use Git to manipulate this project. Okay. Um, so let's say, for example, let's say, for example, there's a project and um, I make it, I want to make a modification now. So let me create a new, a new file. Okay. Called, um, let me see, supply. Let's create a new uh, file called supply. Supply dot so. So this is a new. Uh, this is a new project. Let me just add some stuff so that. Dogma, solidity. Zero point eleven. Sorry, just give me one minute. Let me set up contract supply. Let's just say this is a uh, let's say um, our team leader created this project and he wants all of us that is in the team to contribute to this project. So I've cloned the project down. This is the project on my local system. Now I've created a new file. Okay, so if you are used to Visual Studio Code, this is, once it's read, it will let you know that this is a new file and Git is not tracking this file. So this is a new file. Let's start um, using some Git commands to, to work on it. So I just created a new uh, file. Now, I am the only one seeing this, this file. My team members that are in other countries are not seeing this file. Or, okay, since we're doing technical content writing, and I'm, I'm writing code, which is not you know, in the context. So let's, let's just remove this, and let's just say we are writing a documentation. Uh, let's say documentation on how to use Git. So maybe you are one of the technical content writers and you've made this new documentation and you want to contribute it to your dev portal. Okay, so this is a new file. You make sure it's saved. So once you've done an edit, okay, you need to um, you need to start using the other commands to, to document it down. So once you've made a change to your project, the first thing that you do, let's let's open the terminal here. Let's use this the terminal on, on Visual Studio Code. Okay. So assuming you are working in a, with a company that's in that's in Germany, you are working as a technical content writer, and your dev portal or your 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 platform, you will have a, a platform where you create content so that people can know how to use your content. And you, you're a content writer, a technical content writer. You've been able to clone your project down, okay, from from Git. Uh, I don't know. I would have loved to show you the process of cloning and all that. Let's go to my GitHub and see if we can just clone uh, a, a project. Because I want I want you people to understand something. We might not be able to do a lot today, but. I wanted to grab some concepts, okay? It's 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 better if you my internet is, is really crazy. Okay. So if you are working with the as a technical content writer, okay, uh your team leader is going to create the project and put it on GitHub and now ask you that in Nigeria to, talk, uh, to clone that project and, 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 and um, make your own contribution and write a page or write uh, some content. For example, let's say our team leader, this is, let's say this is a technical, this is our developer portal or something. 
uh, and your tech, your team leader wants you to clone it, to, to work on it, to contribute to it. So this is the step you go through. Uh, we'll do, we'll go to, once you hit the repository, you go to this place called code, you copy this URL, okay? Then you go to your command line, go to your, you clone. Remember your team leader that's in Germany, created this project, your dev portal project, and put it on GitHub. You, you are in Nigeria, you want, to, you want to contribute to that project. So this is the step you go through. The first thing you need to do is to clone it down. Cloning means you are getting a copy from GitHub into your local system, because that's where you can work on it. So let's clone this project. Paste that address. So it's going to clone it down. Yeah. So uh, we have this project now. It, it has cloned it down. So we have it copied down. So let's cd into it. Let's go into the directory. Uh, supply. Supply dash chain dash dev. Okay. We are inside the, the project. Okay. And um, let's open it up in VS Code. So this is the project that our team leader created. And he's in Germany. He created this project. It's on GitHub. He wants me to write one page. Okay, so I have the project now on my local system. And uh, I'll just create a new, a new page, for example. Let's say, let's call it use. Use blockchain. Maybe that's the technical article that you want to write. Then we'll now make content, write our technical content and all. Uh, yeah. We'll now write our technical content. For example, as a technical content writer, you've written a content on how to use your company's, one of your company's tools. You are done. So what you now do once you've made some edits, yeah, let's go back to, yeah. So after making edits, okay, the next thing that you need to do is to use a command called git add. So what that means is that uh, Git has different stages, okay? One stage is the main project that your team... The second uh, stage is your local copy that you have, okay? So after you've made edit to your uh, file, you need to send it to your, your, your team leader's project. And the third command that you need to type is git add. So what git add does is that it adds that file that you have created into what we call a staging area. If I go through, if you read that my, uh, 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 the, the tutorials I wrote about how to use git, you'll see all this stuff, okay? So let's look at the file that we have changed. You can do git, oh, no, no. You can do git status look at the files that you just modified. And I did git status and it, it's telling me that I modified, I created this new file, okay? So this is the new file that I'm going to add to send to my boss, okay? So I now know that contract use blockchain is a new file. So what I'll do is to now do it add, yeah, I could actually just copy this so that we are fast. It add this, okay. Then after I've added, I'll now do git commit. Git commit dash m. I'll now say maybe add a new 
file. I'm going to explain all these commands to you, okay? For you to tell me one file change, this is the new file. Then after I do this, I'm supposed to do bit push. Put origin master. So once I type this command now, it takes this file that I just added to this, my project. Remember, I'm doing this on my own system. It will now take this file and push it to your team leader's project that's on GitHub. So your team leader will now be able to say, oh, okay, Gino created a new file and this is a new file. Your team leader can review this file and if everything is okay, the team leader will merge it. So what that means is that you have been able to contribute from here. I'm currently in Abuja. I've been able to create um, a new document and I'm pushing it to my team leader's general project. Okay. Um, let's just go through the slide so that we can see how everything proceeds. So you use git add dot command is used to add all the changes that are in the current directory. Okay, so what that means after you've made a change locally, uh, I, I just hope like you people are understanding and trying to grab some small, some, some knowledge from what I've been saying. Okay, are we still on point? Uh, wisdom, are we on point and every yes yes we are so can you respond in the chat if you're on point or so far if you have any question mm -hmm. can you just probably bring it up so he would um help you out to explain it yeah please are, are you are you following me are you are you following me are you like do you have some understanding of what i'm saying and it's okay if you don't have full understanding at this point okay the idea is for you to go back i have this document i'm going to share this like wisdom is going to share this all these documents with you okay and you yeah i've already shared the document to them already before now yeah so uh don't worry if you're not following too much you can reach out to me personally i'm on social media you can reach out to me and ask more questions okay and um I, I, I hope like we're all like we're all good okay so let's just proceed step by step like i want us to take we don't have to rush everything the main thing is that you are understanding you are understanding that's what is important okay so at this point i would like to take questions if you have any questions about what i've been saying so far if you are confused about anything i've been saying so far at this point please let me let's because it's not just about talking talking and nobody's understanding what i'm saying Let's make sure we are all on on same page. So, uh, if you have questions and all that, please let me know before we we continue. Any question? Yeah, wisdom. I. Yeah, I'm checking in the chat. So uh, somebody asked, do yeah, I need... just continue? Yeah, somebody asked a question. Mm -hmm. do, do I need to have an existing repository on GitHub before I can edit it on Git? Yes. Oh, uh, so no, no, no. So the thing is that you can create a project locally, just as the way I did. I created a project. I I, I did two examples. One, I created a new project. Okay. I created a new project and I'm using Git to manipulate it. I can decide after I've worked on the project, after I've done written all the features and all the documentation, I can decide to now push it to GitHub. Now, it's two ways. You can also have a project on Git, on GitHub, and clone that project locally. I gave a scenario whereby You are working in a company where one of your staff in engineer and you are part of a technical content writing team. Your team leader that's in Singapore creates this project that you want to work on and he puts it on GitHub. What is expected is that all those other team members that are in different countries, you will clone that project down. Cloning is cloning means getting a copy of that project down. To your local computer so that once you have that project down on your local computer you can now make your own contributions 
You can now modify it, do anything you want to do that on, on it, and then push it back. I don't know if, if that answers your question. It's two ways. You can create a fresh project locally on your computer and start using Git to manipulate it and edit it and add more stuff then before pushing it to GitHub. Or you can have a project on GitHub and clone it down locally and work. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, that's uh, Suleiman. Suleiman, I don't know if that answers your question. I'm seeing another question called, my question is based on the Git configuration setting. Is this something one should do before starting a project or one-time config? Uh, if I understand your questions, uh, correctly, your question correctly, you have to do your configuration. If you have not, if you don't have Git before, if you don't have Git before, okay, you will need to, once you are installing Git on your system, I went through the process of installing Git. Once you're installing, after you've installed Git, you will need to do your configurations. Once you do your configurations, you don't need to do it anymore, okay? You need to, first of all, configure your Git before you can start working on project. As uh, Suleiman said, I have a hand on it. I will read more on it. Okay, okay. Yeah. So if these are the questions that we have, and I've tried to provide some answers, let, let's proceed, okay? Let's, let's proceed and see how much we can cover. If we can't cover much, the material is there. You are advised to take that material and do your own research. And read. the material is, is very, very simple, okay? So uh, let's go back to the material. Um, so these are the commands. So one very important thing I just explained right now uh, before uh, the question, we started taking questions was that how to make an edit to a project and how to use, after you've edited a project, maybe you created a file in a project, the next command that you will use is git add you use git add to add that change that project that feature or that file that you have created you use it to add it to a, we, we call it a staging area okay uh so once you do that git will now start tracking that file if you are just working on a file and all that if you have not done git add git is not tracking it but once you do git add git now starts tracking all the changes that you make so you use git add, after you do git add, you use git add to add a file that you have uh, edited into the staging area. After you do that, you now do git commit. Okay, git commit is like saying, um, I've made, uh, this is the change that I made. This is the change that I have made on my local computer. And once you are doing git commit, you need to add, what, what was the change that, that, that you, that you, that you just made. For example, this is a typical git commit command. You see it saying git commit dash m commit message. So for example, if you've created a new, if you've created a new uh, file, you can say in this, instead of this commit, you can say, I created a new file that can show people how to do blah, blah, blah. Okay. So you commit that, and once you do commit, you now push. Once you do git push, it means all the changes that you've done on your local system, you want it to uh, appear on the central repository, on your team leader's repository, so your team leader can see the changes that you've made. So uh, the, diff the different stages of making changes to your repository, the first thing is to make changes, which is create the file, create the file, write your content or write your code or any stuff. Then the next thing is to do is to add those changes. After you've added those changes, the next thing is to commit those changes. You know, you commit those changes so that your team leader will be able to see the change that you've made. So we have what we call how to write good commit message. Okay. Um, I'll not go. I'll not. I'll not go in depth into that. I'll just rush because I think I spent a lot of time already. Uh, I'll do after some time. I'll ask wisdom. How much more time do I have? Okay, so that I know how much I can cover more. But um, so there, there's how to write a good commit message. You don't just write. For example, you added a login page, or if, for example, you are writing a technical content. You've written a technical. You've written one page on how to do authentication, for example. 
there's how you write the commit message. It, it, we have a professional or a good way of writing it. You don't just go and write, uh, I've made uh, this change and all that, right? So we, your commit message needs to be short, okay? So write a short single line summary of what the change is, is all about. So if you've written a new content and you want to commit, you write, you make it short. You don't write long commit message. You make it short, less than 50 characters, okay? That 50 character will explain the change that you've made. Okay, uh, keep each line to less than 72 characters. These are, so these, these are just how to write some good commit message. For example, this is a bad commit message called fixed typo. What do you mean by fixed typo? Which typo? But a good way to rephrase that commit message is called add missing hyphen in a project. So there are good ways of writing commit message. You can research about that later. You don't just write commit message anyhow. There is a good pattern. So we have good patterns. So the next thing we're going to look at is how to view commit logs that has been made to a project. So like I told you, every time you make a change, you commit that change. Next, tomorrow you make another change, you're going to commit it. Next, tomorrow you make another change, you're going to commit it. So. You can view all the commits that you've made. That's one thing. That's why it's called version control. You made it. You can decide to say, okay, I want to view the commit that I made day before yesterday. I want to view the commit that I made yesterday. Okay, and we have commands that you can use to do that. For example, uh, you type git log to see all the commits. Okay, uh, I have uh, a repository here. For example. Uh, if I do, if I just type git log, you see, so you see, these are all the commits that I've made to this project. You can see a commit, for example, this commit was made uh, okay, Saturday 24th. So this, is, so this is a new project that I just cloned. So I just made only one commit. If you remember, uh, this was the commit that I made. So that's why it's showing just this commit. So if I've made five commits, if I've made 10 commits in the past one week, I can use git log to, to view all these commits, okay? Um, yeah, this is just talking about commit. Key concept and architecture to enable us understand how git work. Uh, so I've, I've talked about git. Git is like a three-tier architecture. Git has a three-tier architecture. One thing that differentiates git from other previous version control systems that have been out there is that other previous version control systems use two-tier architecture, two-tier. So what that means is that maybe your team leader that's in generally creates a repository, the repository is on GitHub, and you that is working on that same project, you have another repository locally. So you just have your local repository and you have your team leader's main repository. But with Git, Git has three-tier architecture. Okay, Git has a working directory, which is the directory that you are currently working on. Then Git has a staging index, which contains changes we are about to commit. And it has a repository. So the repository is the, the one that's on GitHub that was created by your team leader. Then we have uh, your local working directory, which is the one that you clone that you're working on it locally. Then we now have a staging index. Staging index, is the, that's where you record all the changes that you have made. So this is Git workflow. After you've created a Git project, we've talked about Git add. You use Git add to add everything, all the changes that you've recently made. Then, um, so if you do Git add the space dot, it will add everything. And that's not a good way. You have a project containing five files, okay? And um, you, you modify only two files. Okay, if you do git add, if you type this command, okay, it will add all the files, all the changes. And you know that um, in projects, in, in projects, there are some configuration files that you are not supposed to push to GitHub. You're not supposed to allow anybody to see those things. It should just be only you. If you do git add, you're adding everything. That's not a good way. A good way is to, for example, this is my project, okay. Um, let me exit out of this place. Oh God, how, okay. Let me just open the terminal. So 
So uh, I want to show. Uh, okay, let me let me edit another file so that we have like two or three files. Let's just say blah blah dot so, and I just add something. So I've, I've made edit to two files. Now, if I do bit status. Okay, I've already copied the that one. S. Yes, uh, so this is the new file that I just created. Uh, so Git is telling me this is a new file. You have to commit it. No. So, but if I do Git log, oh my God, it's going to be. Uh, Git log just reviews all the commit messages. One minute. Let it come up. Let it come up. Uh, if I do get status, uh, this is the file I've not committed. If I've not committed, if I've created like five files and I've, I've not committed, I'll see all the files here. And so, when you want to add, instead of doing git add dot. This command we add every all the changes, both on configurations files, both on those unnecessary files that you're not supposed to send out there. It will. So this is not the right way. The right way is to do git add. Then you put you copy the file that you want to add. Okay, instead of doing git add dot, that adds everything. So it's better to do git add one at a time. You have added each of the file. Now I have. Um, there's a reason I'm saying this because in my company where I, where I work, I had um, issues. There's one file called gem file. We are not supposed to. When after you've worked on your copy, you're not supposed to push that gem file to the central repository. Okay, but for a long time, because I was using git add dot, all the files would be added. So it was my, my team leader now told me like, don't do git add. Dot, because git add dot we add all the changes, everything that you've done. So you do git add and add the files one at a time. So that was how I was able to because we are we are not supposed to commit um, the gem file. We are not supposed to do that. But because I only knew how to use git add dot, which was adding everything, I was having issues. So you add file. If you modify this file, you add only that file. You add only that file. Not instead of adding everything. So after you've added the file, the next thing is to do git commit. Git commit is then used to push file to the repository. Okay. Now, uh, there's one thing about git, okay, that, that differentiates it from every other version control. Whenever you make a change, git will create what we call a hash value. Let me take some time to explain this, what, what this means. Um, so, Hashing, we have a, a concept in programming or a computer called hashing. So what that means is that you can take a test. For example, I can say a test. Thank you for having me on this presentation. Okay. I'll take that test. I'll pass that test. Thank you for having me on this presentation into an algorithm, into a mathematical function. And that function now, we now convert that thank you for having me into something that is unreadable. You cannot read, you cannot read it. Uh, this happens very well in the blockchain. If you, uh, if you know about the blockchain or Web3 development, uh, they will tell you that there's a process called encryption and decryption. If you know about WhatsApp, when WhatsApp came out, one thing that sold WhatsApp was that WhatsApp was doing end-to-end -end encryption. What that means is that any message you send on WhatsApp will be converted into something that you can read, and that content will be transferred. When it gets to your friend's place, it will not be decrypted. It's the process of, um, it's a process, it goes through the process of, um, um, it's, it's encrypted decryption. Um, so what that means is that, for example, I type high wisdom. It will take that high wisdom, convert it into, blah, 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 like hexadecimal string, something that you can't read, okay? 
the reason they are doing that is to prevent it from being hacked. So that even if a hacker hacks that test, okay, they will not be able to know what it means. So Git uses the same thing. Anytime you make a change to a file on Git, Git will create a new hash. It will create a new hash value. It will create a new hash value. So that's how it stores every change that you make, every change. Any change you make on Git, Git will, it will hash that chain, create a new um, hash, hash string. So if you, if you take a look at, um, if you take a look at, let me show you what those hash, hash values are. Okay, uh, let me let me let me show you how what 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 this means. Now, I get you see this you see this string. I'm highlighting it. This is a hash, and if you see it, you can't read it. This hash will represent all the changes that you've made. Okay, so if you want to go back to this change, maybe you made this change like day before yesterday. Git will create a unique hash value for it. And if you want to go back to that version, you will use this hash value. Okay, so for every change that you make, Git creates a new hash value. That is how, and each of these hash values, they are unique. No two hash values can be the same. Hi, Gino, we create a new hash value. Gino is a boy. We create a new hash value. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It will create new hash value. All these things are unique. So that's how Git can go back and retrieve a particular version of your document. Okay. Um, so how to add a new file. This is adding a new file. We talked about it using Git add. Git add dot. This will add all the changes in your working directory to the staging area. But git add file name can be used to add a single file. So I told you it's not a good practice to just do git add dot. It will add everything, both everything, both the things that you don't want to share, to just add it. So it's good to use git add individual changes. Um, so you can view changes to a file using git. You've made a change to a particular file. You can use git div to view the changes that have been made to that file. For example, um, not this, um, finding it how to get out of this um, terminal console. That's coming up. Um, okay, git, um, git, div, then file name, let me, let's say, La, la. Yeah, so you use the git div command to view changes to a file in a common format. So we can see what changes are. We use git div to view changes in our working directory. Um, how to use Git to track files that are deleted. So even, for example, you delete a file, you know, you can use Git to view those files that you've deleted. You can use Git to remove a file. Okay, maybe uh, you are working on a particular file and um, you, you, it was a mistake that you made and you want to remove that file. There are Git commands. This is the Git command to use to remove that file, okay? How to track moved or renamed file using Git. There are commands to track uh, uh, files that you have renamed and all that. So how to view previous commit. I think we've, we've, we've seen this. We've seen this before. How to compare two commits. There are a lot of things that you can do. You can also have multi-line uh, uh, commit messages. You can have atomic commits. Atomic commits is just a small commit. Like... So it's a good practice to, whenever you make a change to a file, okay, a substantial change, you do git commit, okay? Uh, don't wait until you finish the full project before you do git commit. So if, for example, you are working on a logging um, application or you are writing a technical content, okay? After finishing like uh, one 
one page, you should commit. Don't wait until you write the full article before committing. You commit, that's what we call atomic commit. Um, and we have a lot of commands for, 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 doing, for doing atomic commits. So you techniques don't do changes to your working directory. So for example, you're working on a directory and you've made a mistake. You want to go back to yesterday or to when it was working well. We have commands that, that do all that, git commands that do that. Uh, I think the main command is to do git reset. Git reset head the file name. It will take you back to what you were working on yesterday. Uh, retrieving old versions, reverting the commit. Maybe you've made a commit and you, you know, you, 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 you find out that you've made a mistake. You can revert that commit. You have commands to do all that. This is the command, git revert, then the name of the SHA, you know. So you use, oh my God, this, this terminal is just, is just acting crazy. So there are different things that you can do. So remember I told you that not all the changes that you've made to your project needs to be pushed to Git, okay? So if there are files that you don't want your boss to see, there are some configuration files or some files that every other person don't need to see. You, you, you put them inside the dot .git ignores files. So any file you put inside dot .git ignore, when you are committing or pushing, Git will not, Git will exclude those files. Maybe uh, your dependencies, uh, your the gem files, there are some files that you don't need to push to GitHub. So you include those files inside the git.ignore files. And we have commands that can enable you to do that. Uh, so, so these are some ideas of the kind of files that you need to ignore when working on a project with people. Compiled source code. Remember that um, when, uh, for example, if you're writing blockchain applications, you write your blockchain applications in solidity. And when, when you compile, it compiles it into bytecode. You don't need to push that bytecode to GitHub. Nobody will understand it. So you can put those kind of files in your Git ignore so that you don't push those files. Packages and compressed files, logs and databases, operating system generated files. These are the files that you don't need to push to Git. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Let's take questions. Let's make sure you understand these things. Just grab some things. You don't need to understand everything. Thank God I have these documents there. You can go through this document again and practice on your own. But let's make sure uh, we understand one or two key concepts about Git. Okay. Uh, so I'm, at this point, I'm going to stop presenting. So let's just talk about what I've been talking about since, like, you know, let's, let's chat to make sure you understand. And anything you don't understand, uh, you can ask a question and, and I'll try to explain.